Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about the radiant floor and our hanger floor system. And basically, it's a bunch of PEX tubing put down before the concrete was put into place. And let's talk about the first component, the PEX loops. Now, Matt and I laid this down in 2016, right before heading down to Bowling Green. And there are 4,300 feet in the main hangar which constitutes 11 loops around. Now we have two that run around the outside corner um, and what they do is they provide the heat to the outside where it loses it to the rest of the world. And then we have a bunch of main loops in the field that are not quite tightly lit. And then of course we also put down PEX tubing to have a radiant ramp. It's 25 feet by 50 feet so that we can melt snow if we want to that way we don't have to go out and shovel it. Now we designed our system based upon the HydroSmart diagram that came with our boiler. So we laid out a manifold board and this was going to corral all the PEX tubing into the manifold, both the supply and the return lines. So there's 26 pieces of PEX and 13 loops. The two on the right are for the radiant ramp. Now let's talk about the rest of the system. Uh, as the manifold board is being laid out, we get water from the hot water heater. It comes in, it goes by an expansion tank, it goes to a pump, which blows it round into the floor. Return pump pulls it back out of the floor. And when we got it all put together with the Y strainer, we did a pressure test. And it was during the pressure test that we found out we had a little bit of a problem. Uh, we had four leaks. And that was because the one inch pipe was uh, BSP on one end and NPT on the other. So this is the air eliminator. Now this one has sweat fittings on it and it weighs about three pounds. It's out of cast brass and on the inside you have a bunch of stainless steel and a valve that gets the micro bubbles as the flow unturbulent goes through it. Now it's easy enough to look inside and as you can see there's some stainless steel wire screening inside the valve. I'm sorry, inside the air separator and that's what drives the micro bubbles out and it's all spiraled up in there and they come out and there's a valve at the top to eliminate the air. So this is how you purge the air from the system to get all the bubbles out. So all you have is 99.6% solution and only 0.04% dissolved air. So here's the system getting ready to go into pressure testing. There's no air eliminator and no pressure valve during the pressure test. But everything's all put up. We're going to work on the electrical wiring here, but we're about ready to turn everything on and have the hot water heater start sending things over. First, we have to do the pressure test, and then we'll load it with the antifreeze mix. And that's pretty much how everything went. Now, here's the uh, hot water heater. It's a uh, natural gas, 120,000 BTU unit. It is modulating, so it will change how much. So we can start water as low as 100 degrees and take it up to 160. It will do 7 gallons a minute. We have pressure gauges in the system, a Y strainer for taking debris out, the air eliminator to get all the bubbles out, and we have both the input and output pressure and temperature so we can see what's coming into the system and what's coming out as we heat the floor. So here's an example of one of the little pressure gauges that we have in the system. It's right there in the 1 inch copper pipe. We have isolator valves around the Y strainer. We have isolator valves around both of the motors. So that if anything ever happens to them and they have to be changed out, it's not an issue. And there's the pump for the primary loop. And then that goes down into a mixing valve where we can mix the water. Here's our air expansion tank all hooked in. And uh, there's the isolation valve, and here's the manifold for the radiant ramp. And we're having a, a leak test here, and we're having a few issues that we're going to address. There were four leaks in the system, and they were where the manifolds were connected together with the connecting nipples. And that's because the nipples were one inch NPT threads and the manifolds are one inch BSP threads and we could never get it to seal. So we welded it uh, with stainless steel piping and not going to be an issue anymore. So here's the final layout after the final pressure test. We just pan through all the components. There's the air eliminator all installed in the uh, one inch in turn line. 
There's our pressure regulator, and it draws down into an overflow bucket. So if we ever get any pressure, the antifreeze will go into a catch bucket. Isolation valves and pump. Our mixing valve right there, and down into the overflow bucket. So now the system's all ready to go. Uh, we've got it loaded now with uh, antifreeze, and it's time to turn it on. Well, we turned the system on, and it started running. And we started using gas out of our gas line. Uh, but to make sure that we could track what was going on with the system and heating everything, we installed a camera on the board so we could watch the air temperature on the bottom left there and the return temperature. And that's what we studied for the next three days until the system began to cycle, knowing that they're letting us know that the concrete floor, half a million pounds, was up to final temperature of 68 degrees with a start at 43. And not only did we watch the return temperature rise, but we watched the air temperature three feet off the floor come up as the floor was being heated. And it came all the way up and now the system is cycling normally. We've taken our Perfect Prime infrared camera and we can see where the concrete is cool and where the loops are. And we were checking all of that. We finally came around to where we found the big thermal mass and that was where the manifold, where the 26 lines enter and exit the slab. That piece of concrete is really nice and warm and that's where we have all the uh, sofas and the uh, recliners that you can sit someplace nice and warm. <music> So here we are looking at the hot water heater. In our case, it's natural gas. It's a 13,000 to 120,000 BTUs per hour. It's a modulating hot water heater, so it'll give us what we need, up to seven gallons a minute. And then there's an isolation valve on the tank, and then we talk about system components very quickly. And then here's our air expansion tank, which is our pressure tank to grab the pressure ripples out of the system when the motor start up and uh, shut down. There's our air separator and our overflow bucket so we can catch our expensive antifreeze water glycol mix back. Our primary pump is 125th horsepower, mainly drives the big loop, sets up the pressure, creates low pressure for the air separator, a mixing valve so that our input and our primary system and secondary system do not have to be at the same temperature, and then that's the line for refilling any volume we're missing. We had to do that a couple times the first couple of days. Here's our supply manifold, the two on the right are for the ramp, and the other ones, or the 11, are for the main field of the hanger. And then we go up into the return side of the manifold, and we have a pump which pulls water out of the floor and goes through an isolation valve and then comes back into the mixing valve. So here's the gauge on the side. It's point two to one gallon per minute and liters per minute one to five. Point oh five, one, two, three, four, five, and in gallons per minute, point oh two to one point three at the max. Turn line back through the secondary system pump, back to the mixing valve back through the Y strainer to collect any sediment or trash and 
back on out. Now the things to notice around the pump, the Y strainers are isolation valves. So in the future, ever if anyone ever needs to be changed, then they're right there ready to go. And the mixing valve is set right now for one big primary loop and we can mix it partially if we want to run our primary loop at one temperature and our secondary loop at another but we're running everything at one time and we have the two pressure gauges in the system for both supply and return pressure as well as a 125th horsepower primary pump and a 1 6th horsepower uh, pump for the secondary loop to push the 3300 well, that's the Radiant system we're using to heat the floor. It's a simple system. We hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and have a good day flying your Grumman. And in addition, there's a little treat about 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all, please enjoy.